In this video, you'll get a quick overview of the mycotoxins test. I'll explain the vibrant advantage and technology used. Then I'll walk through each section of the test highlighting key features. I'll also suggest complementary tests and end by summarizing the key takeaways and where to go for additional information. Mycotoxins are toxic compounds naturally produced by certain types of molds. Mycotoxin-producing molds can grow on food such as cereal, coffee, dried fruit, nuts and spices, or on water-damaged building materials. Mycotoxin exposure can potentially contribute to a myriad of health harms as they have allergenic, inflammatory, carcinogenic, and immunomodulatory effects. Symptoms of mycotoxin toxicity are often general and vague, thus difficult to diagnose. And without diagnosis, it's difficult to treat. The Vibrant Mycotoxins test is an easy at-home urine test that uses the gold standard liquid chromatography mass spectrometry to measure 29 of the most common mycotoxins. Liquid chromatography with tandem mass spectrometry is a powerful analytical technique that combines the separating power of liquid chromatography with the highly sensitive and selective mass analysis capability of triple quadrupole mass spectrometry. Before we dive into the actual report, I want to remind you that you can now choose how much information to include in the report you download for yourself or the report you share with your patients. You have three options, the summary, summary with interpretation, and the full report. I'll be going over the full report in this video as it is the most comprehensive. Scan the QR code pictured here to learn more. Let's start with a quick overview. The mycotoxin sample report includes a cover page, which lists the sample type. The introduction, including the methodology and interpretation of report. The summary, which shows results outside of the reference range. And finally, the full report, which lists all 29 mycotoxins across three categories, the aflatoxins, other mycotoxins, and trichothecenes. Aflatoxins are created mainly by food-derived molds such as Aspergillus parasiticus and Aspergillus flavus. Note the results are reported as both a number and also plotted on the color-coded scale, so you can visually see where your patient's results fall. Results in green correspond to the 0 to 75th percentile and indicates mild exposure. A yellow result corresponds to the 75th to 95th percentile, indicating moderate exposure, and a result in red corresponds to greater than 95th percentile, indicating exposure higher than 95% of the population. If you want to learn more about results above the 75th percentile, such as aflatoxin M1 in this example, simply flip back to the summary port to read the interpretive comment. The interpretation of the mycotoxins test includes the background, associated risk, possible sources, and detox suggestions. The other mycotoxins are produced by many types of molds, including aspergillus, fusarium, candida albicans, and penicillium. Most of these molds grow on foods, but some grow on water-damaged building materials like wood and drywall. Ochratoxin A is very common. If I had to guess, I'd say about 90% of the reports I reviewed have elevated ochratoxin A. Good news for this patient, it looks like they've reduced their levels from 5.39 back in February to 4.55 today. Trichothecenes are produced mainly by Fusarium and Statubratris tartarum, commonly known as black mold. If you've heard of black mold, you know to avoid it. For example, ferrocarin J, which this patient has moderate exposure to, is produced by Statubotrys chartarum and can lead to severe adverse effects, including immune suppression, cytotoxicity, skin necrosis, anemia, granulocytopenia, and additionally can cause oral epithelial lesions, hematopoietic disorders, hypotension, and coagulopathy. One last thing to point out, all urine tests should measure urine creatinine. This is because urine can have varied concentrations, Sometimes it's pale yellow, and sometimes it's the color of a school bus. Good news, urine creatinine is constant. So all mycotoxins are normalized to urine creatinine to account for urine dilution variations. As we talk about complementary tests, I want you to think about Dr. Sidney Baker's TAC rules. Rule number one, if you're sitting on a TAC, it takes a lot of aspirin to make the pain go away. In other words, it's difficult to heal if you don't identify the root cause of your symptoms. Rule number two, 
If you're sitting on two tacks, removing one does not necessarily result in 50% improvement in symptoms. In other words, sometimes there's more than one toxin contributing to your symptoms. In addition to mycotoxins, also consider exploring exposure to environmental toxins, heavy metals, and PFAS to investigate and reduce total toxic burden. Also consider the hepatic function panel to investigate liver function, which impacts detoxification and elimination, the renal function panel to investigate kidney function, which also impacts detoxification and elimination, and hormones, be it serum, saliva, and or urine, to investigate mycotoxin impact on endocrine and reproductive symptoms. If you suspect a fungal infection or a mold-induced hypersensitivity, you could order the Candida plus IBS profile or the gut sumer to investigate fungal, bacterial, and viral dysbiosis. In conclusion, the Vibrant Mycotoxins test measures 29 of the most common mycotoxins, so you know if mycotoxins are contributing to your symptoms, such as fatigue and weakness, chronic burning in the throat and nasal passages, coughing, wheezing, and shortness of breath, loss of balance, depression and or anxiety, skin rashes, eye irritation or tearing of the eyes, headache and or light sensitivity, hearing loss, heightened sensitivity to chemicals and foods, irregular heartbeat, morning stiffness and or joint pain, muscle weakness, sleep problems, poor memory, difficulty finding words, slower reaction time, vision changes, difficulty concentrating, abdominal pain, diarrhea and or bloating, unusual skin sensations such as tingling and numbness, increased urinary frequency or increased thirst, disorientation and or dizziness, static shocks or metallic taste in the mouth. See, I told you symptoms of mycotoxin toxicity are often general and vague. By identifying mycotoxins in the urine, you can devise a plan to reduce exposure, increase elimination, and promote healing today. If you have any questions, visit the Vibrant Wellness website to learn more.